It kind of smells like like a garbage can, right? Where did you have this? Here are the top 10 worst foods ever. It's rare to find a food that people unanimously find disgusting, but these foods could possibly be the worst of the worst. Now that's a man. I don't know when he's got something good in his mouth. Brussels sprouts. Uh, oh my god, it's Brussels sprouts! <laughs> that's worse than no food. If you asked every kid in the world what food they hated the most, you can be sure that Brussels sprouts will come up more than once. Although widely hated, Brussels sprouts aren't the worst in terms of nutrients and are full of omega-3 fatty acids, fiber, and vitamin C. So for health nuts, it's hard to be too dismissive about them, but there are plenty of other vegetables that are both healthy and don't taste like a crowded bus. Essentially, the flavor of Brussels sprouts. Most people will either love or hate the sprouts. There seems to be no in-between. Maybe it has to do with the funky, earthen taste and the stench they give off when they are steamed or boiled. Ha ha! All you got was Monica's stinky Brussels sprouts! Stinky? Nothing is worse than sitting in a kitchen infused full of that Brussels sprout boiling water smell. It could also be the fact that there are few ways to hide them with other foods or prepare them in any way that isn't gross. Basically, Brussels sprouts mainly remind people of an unwanted dinner invitation that does not scream inviting. Stop! You're gonna make me puke. However, they definitely score big points on the health scale, and you could do worse than eating a batch of these. But get real. Durian. Is it disgusting? They call it the blue cheese of fruit. Durian fruit is widely considered to be one of the foulest, worst-smelling foods on Earth. The spiky durian is found mostly around Southeast Asia and has been described as smelling like turpentine, rotten eggs, onions, gym socks, and dirty bedding. However, the smell is something distinct from the taste, which is actually rather mellow and sweet. So there is a big difference between what you might imagine it tastes like after catching a whiff and the experience of actually putting the thing in your mouth. It is so notorious stinky that the authorities in Singapore have banned the fruit on buses, trains, and other forms of mass transit. It stinks and I don't like it. So think twice before buying one of these and carrying it around anywhere or you might risk the wrath of the people around you. The actual durian flesh, when peeled away from the spiked exterior, is described as tasting like custard, sweet and rich. This fruit is a big part of many Southeast Asian cuisines, particularly desserts, which can be succulent, especially once the innards are properly prepared. The new D24 Durian McFlurry, made with real D24. So while it is one of the worst, it can be an interesting snack, and it is also surprisingly healthy, containing more nutrients overall than most other fruit. Spam. I get you spam and eggs. Spam is seen as one of the most disgusting meat byproducts and is so infamous. They turned it into a word for unsolicited junk mail that nobody wants. Hi, it's so great to see you again. Do I know you? It's Spam! Nobody really wants the real Spam either. It is canned cooked pork made by Hormel Foods that became popular throughout the world during World War II when food rationing became necessary for basic survival. Now we live in a different time, and somehow Spam still exists. Prying open a can of the stuff can remind you of the smell of a crowded train car, but it's the taste that's the kicker. Random processed salty pork full of preservatives and fake binder starch that grows naturally natural gelatin all from a tin can is about as disgusting as meat can get. This tinned meat is not even reliable as a cheap protein source since any potential health benefits are negated by Spam's high sodium and fat content. So in other words, it's gross in more ways than one. I wasn't that bad. Come on, Barfy. Let's go. Spam was even viewed as suspicious during the war, with soldiers calling it pork that didn't pass the health test, along with other veiled insults directed at their required rations. These poor soldiers glumly eating the stuff on the front lines, wishing they were anywhere else, eating just about anything else. Tripe. You want to get me tripe? Get me tripe. No, no, no. <laughs> tripe is just what you might expect from eating the stomach lining of an animal. It's an unpleasant, tough, roughly textured experience from start to finish, but somehow this meat product is widely consumed and beloved around the world. It has enjoyed a long history and has a significant place in world cuisine, given that it is very cheap. 
people have pretty much been eating it since we've been eating cattle. But that doesn't make it a pleasant thing to munch on. Less popular now in affluent countries, tripe went out of fashion for a while, but its popularity has been resurgent among world-famous chefs who prefer to use the whole animal rather than simple, popular cuts of meat. Why haven't you had tripe before, my darling? This might be a noble goal, but tripe is still tripe, and it is a pain to deal with in the kitchen, and it's really tricky to make it taste or feel good in the mouth. Tripe needs to be cleaned and dressed properly to make it edible, since you all know what runs through the intestines and stomach of a cow. Then you need to try and actually make it taste okay and not like leather boots. In the southern U.S., a kind of tripe known as chitterlings is famous and popular. In the back, cooking up chitlins. Making it spicy! Oh my lord. Chitterlings are made from the intestines of a hog, and it's something people often eat, either deep fried or stewed. But even admirers of the food will admit that it is an acquired taste. Sir Strumming. Oh! Oh my gosh! That smells like a porta potty! The Baltic herring is one of the most abundant fish in the world, which makes you question why the Swedish, in this day and age, feel a need to preserve and ferment this fish into a disturbingly sour canned meal known as surstrumming. The fermenting process requires about six months of these small fish fillets to be soaked in salt in order to create its characteristic rotten smell, apparently a stench that whets the appetite of some people of the world. Most would run from the sulfuric fumes, as surstrumming is routinely considered one of the foulest, putrid-smelling foods ever. Perhaps it is tradition. The preserved herring has known to be a part of the northern Swedish diet since the 16th century. This was back in the day when people actually really needed to ferment and preserve food in strange ways to survive. This is how they would have to transport their herring, this way. This is the way you lived. Now, it's hard to argue that this method is required for survival today, except in some really harsh and remote parts of the world, but that doesn't matter to the fans of surstrumming. They love and admire the questionable smell of this fish, even if it would make the common eater wretch before even having a first taste. Fans of the fish will argue for its health benefits, but for most people, there are plenty of other healthy options. The fact is, this food stinks. Oh, you trying to kill us? Oh, that's ridiculous. Balut. There's a little pocket of meat in there. Now, bite down on it. Everybody likes street food, but balut is one of the foods most people feel strongly about never wanting to try. Balut is the name for a fertilized, developed egg embryo that is then boiled and eaten from the shell. It's mostly consumed within China, the Philippines, Cambodia, and Vietnam, and luckily, that's about it. You're basically chowing down on a veiny, undeveloped body of a baby chicken or fowl that has developed from the yolk but hasn't yet become a bird. So it's kind of like half egg, half bird, cooked and slimy, staring at you as you unwrap it. Ew. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Most people would probably find this food among the most disgusting things to eat, but then again, people throughout the world eat eggs or chicken every day and don't really think much beyond that anyway. So what's wrong with eating it while it's halfway between both? Overall, Balut still ranks among the most disgusting foods and is definitely an acquired taste and is not recommended for the faint-hearted. Or anyone, really. In fact, most people would recommend you run far, far away if you encounter a Balut. Run for your life! Katsu Marzu. Dad, cheese truck! Italy is renowned for its culinary history and is considered to have some of the best food in the world. To contrast that heritage, Sardinians have long been attracted to what many people would consider the foulest food in the world. Casumarzu cheese is literally rotting from the inside when it's consumed. The interior of this sheep's cheese is full of maggots that have been deliberately introduced to promote constant fermentation, which transforms the ordinarily hard pecorino-like cheese into something soft and tender. Funnily enough, it's considered a delicacy locally. The Casu Marzu needs to contain thousands of maggots before it is ready to eat, and people sit at the lunch table and dip into it, eating the cheese and maggots together in some kind of symphony of delight. Or horror, depending on what part of the world you're from. These violent delights have violent ends. 
controversial cheese even in Sardinia, which has officially outlawed the product for consumption. However, it's still regularly eaten there even if you can't walk into a shop and buy it. Since it's a food that balances the tightrope of rotting and edible, the only way to know if it's okay to eat is if the maggots are still alive. If you open the cheese and see the maggots have died, you know it's probably not edible anymore. If he dies, he dies. How, Cog? How can you eat that? If you knew they were off, what did you say? Halkart, or fermented shark, is widely considered to be one of the stinkiest and nastiest tasting foods of all time. But it has a history as an important protein source for the fishermen in Iceland and Greenland who needed to preserve meat to last throughout the year. The age of people needing to survive in harsh climates alone is mostly over, but for whatever reason, the good people of Iceland continued to consume this dish, mostly as tradition during their midwinter festival known as Thoroblat. Apparently, the smell is so foul and intense that when a package of Halkart is opened, it simply reeks of ammonia, industrial chemicals, and cleaning detergent. Ah, what is it? <laughs> The bog of eternal stings. Then there's the taste, which doesn't really mellow it out, even if it supposedly tastes better than it smells. Pinching your nose will only get you so far when you try and eat it, since you're still eating an old, rotten shark that smells like something you'd clean your bathroom with. This is a food that has the distinction of being the most disgusting food ever. We're in the end game now. Rocky Mountain Oysters. If I don't have some kind of nugget every five minutes, I'll die. Rocky Mountain Oysters, or Prairie Oysters as they're known in Canada, can be battered and deep fried and called whatever anybody wants, but at the end of the day, they're still balls. The oyster name might be a trick somebody decided on a long time ago so that customers didn't realize they were actually eating bull testicles. But the truth is, that is exactly what you're eating and no fancy name will ultimately be able to shield you from it. Preparing Rocky Mountain oysters is a delicate process in which a butcher has to first skin the testicles and remove them, a completely baffling procedure to most people. Tell me how! Then there isn't really much you can do with them to mask what you're actually eating. They are often served and enjoyed deep fried or pounded flat and simply cooked. But even then, most people would still probably rather eat the hoof or the tongue of an animal before they go for the testicles. Ah, my cry. Still, these oysters can be a fairly good source of nutrition and protein, and it is considered a sign of respect in many cultures to not discard any part of the animal that you've slaughtered to eat. And there is always a hardcore fan base that exists for these treats, especially in Spain, South and Central America, and in the Midwest and Southern U.S. Bull Pizzle. Give it to Mama. Mama don't want this. This is the only piece that I have. We'll break it in half. Come on. Bull Pizzle is a cutesy name to cover for the fact that what the restaurant is serving you is actually a gigantic bull penis. Thankfully, few restaurants offer this up as a dish anymore, and it's mostly used as meat for dogs chew toys these days. That's right, dog owners, your dog might well have been eating bull penis for the last four hours. But there are cuisines throughout the world that feature this delicate organ of the bull, including Jamaica, where the pizzle is referred to as cow cods and is enjoyed stewed into a soup. In China, it continues to be eaten and revered as a medicinal product used to improve stamina and as an aphrodisiac. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! There are probably not many other places in the world where chomping on a dried bull private part will attract a member of the opposite sex, but hey, to each his own. Where did you get that? The best thing that can be said for it is that bull pizzle is certainly exotic and strange. However, it likely provides no extra benefits than what you would get from eating the other parts of the animal. Stick around, just tap or click another great video, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.